Welcome back to TTC. I hope you're ready for some backyard science because if you wear a lab coat to work, you might want to divert your precious eyes. You ever hang out with your buds after work and after a few beers, a debate comes up? Like how there's two types of customers, the walk-ins who want the cheapest oil and filters you got, and the appointment maker who brings their own synthetic royal purple and k &N air filter because they live their life one freeway on ramp at a time. Well, as luck would have it for us in this case, on this topic of intake filters, we happen to have some equipment you might want to measure some of that airflow, CFM, and some shop facts to provide the engine vacuum. We made a bet on this topic between us and the loser has to pay for these filters from today out of their pocket. These vacs themselves too use air filters. Essentially, if you can see a difference, we can measure that and look at that filter performance. Using the old dirty shop vac filter on this thing, it makes an average of 151 CFM, which is not a ton and completely removing it, which wouldn't be a good idea for a vacuum, but for today's experiment makes sense. We get an increase to 210 CFM. We are gonna be testing vehicle intakes, but this is basically a proof of concept stage. Buying a new Bauer shop vac from Harbor Freight with a new filter installed, that's 223 CFM and removing that filter, just the entire housing assembly as well, we get 238 CFM on average. So we can measure both large and small improvements. It seems like we're in business. This is the stock airbox off of a Nissan 370Z and the 370Z is the perfect car for today's experiment for a few reasons. It's a performance oriented vehicle that between the Nissan version of it and the Infiniti G37, you'll see the average customer want to use everything from their own provided k and filter to OEM to I don't care what's in there, it's just the cheapest thing you got, to telling you to not touch it because they just re-oiled their k and Typhoon aftermarket intake, and even to $80 eBay cold air intakes you'll see installed on these things, which we bought all of those to test today, as well as some Porsche parts because they're the largest and most expensive we could find, which sparked even more debate. And for number two, the 370Z intake boxes take slide-in filters into this little door, and it's really easy to switch those all in and out. Number three, none of us on the channel have the car, which makes it impartial to settle the debate. But my friend Mark does and can put miles on this aftermarket intake because I'm thinking these oil types, after like an engine oil change worth of miles, won't beat a cheap eBay intake. Number four, they have two intakes under the hood, which means we can test a single one to its max and double that for the whole engine. And it's rather simple math for RPM, displacement, and CFM, you can put all those into a calculator or even in this case on the forums, this guy breaks it down as 185 CFM per intake for the 350Z and using the same math, we get around 196 CFM for the 3.7 liter 370Z. And with no filters anywhere, we're gonna be getting here about 215 CFM on this intake with the Bauer shop vac with nothing inside the air box. We're liking that. So the question is, what does it flow with an air filter that it should be using? This is a genuine Nissan part number 16546-JK20A, the OEM air filter that these engines used and we paid $30 for it, which is not bad, but keeping in mind you need two of them, it's 60 bucks. Some customers might wanna throw in the $19 Fram that's coming up. So ideally, if this is gonna work and be representative, this should show less flow than with no filter, but also not too far off of our mathematical engine CFM calculation because it was designed to be used with that engine. The OEM filter flows an average of 193 CFM. We use the data record and average functions for this gauge and just remove the first few data points from it bouncing around so much to get an average reading for each. We calculated 196 max would be required from the engine. It measures 193 on the OEM. I think we have half a bank of a 370Z in the form of a shop vac here. It's pretty neat and ready to take on the filter world. Next up, we have the Fram Extra Guard. This is a $19 piece and is probably one of the most often purchased brands from people doing these sort of things in their driveway, which I'd recommend because it is a simple job to do if you want to do it. Right off the bat, it looks smaller. It, it isn't smaller, but by the amount of media, well, you can see it sort of looks like a smaller filter. Now, keep in mind here, we're only measuring the difference in flow between the filters themselves and how much that makes. We're isolating one variable. We're blocking off the math sensor completely. We're ignoring throttle bodies, maybe other mods you have or haven't done. This isn't a measure of power loss versus gained as that can and will change a lot between different vehicles. What we wanna know is brass tacks is one filter alone going to flow better than another 
when you're making that single buying decision. And in this case, it's looking pretty bleak. The Fram sees an average of across the window of readings recorded here with the sensor clamped into the same position, 171 CFM, which if you double for the other bank of cylinders on the 370Z or Hot Boy G37, we're not looking so hot anymore. This equals, well, 100% for the OEM because it is OEM and the Fram Extra Guard, just 89% of that. The engine would like as much as 392. I mean, that is that red line, not peak horsepower RPM, but still, this is not so great. We feel even you, though, could probably suss that out in person or even on the other side of the screen by looking at this thing as while the filter media is all there, they sort of goop things around it too much. We got 141 millimeters across the OEM, the exposed part of that filter, and just 125 to 128 millimeters on the Fram. The other dimension is about the same as OEM, but my monkey brain is saying this is just sloppy and accounting for that less flow. Could be anything, but this seems to be like an obvious reason that's standing out to me. And this is the KNN high flow performance air filter we bought for $55. You'd need two of them, so that's a $110 proposition, but they claim to increase horsepower by flowing air more easily and lasts much longer. It's not a paper media, so it can be cleaned. You may want to factor that in if it's worth it for you. And it seems to have about the same amount of filter exposed. Let's see how it does. The KNN gets a very respectable, well actually just pretty good overall reading of 204 CFM average. That's gonna be 408 CFM combined with your dual intake boxes under the hood and just about 106% of the OEM parts. Now, will it use that extra CFM? That depends on what you have going on under your hood. It's why we're trying to isolate these variables to just the filter. Now, these are pretty fun and simple to test with this setup and just wanted to make the loser of this contest pay even more. So we bought a few more. One was a high performance filter off of Amazon for 30 bucks from a brand we've never heard of, but that one didn't even fit. So next up, we got the cheapest option we could find just sorted by price from multiple places. and. This is it, surprisingly, Bosch. If I saw a Bosch filter for seven bucks, and that's that's this one, it was only $7 in this case, I'd probably just buy it, to be honest. The Bosch has some of the same sort of thing going on in that it's maybe not extra rubber gooped on here, but more of a frame around it that's wider, leading to a narrower area of exposed filter media. So it's like the Fram, just maybe more consistently that way. And yeah, this was surprising to see. We're gonna get just 173 CFM on average, not a whole lot more than the Fram, but at least in this case, it's a whole lot less than half the price at $7. We're totaling for a combined 346 CFM here, which is 90% of OEM. On to Denso at $13.50. When it comes to spark plugs, Toyota parts, I'm often using Denso and OEM sort of interchangeably in those cases, if I'm honest. And at $13.50 versus 30, that would be some cost savings on each of those two filters you'd need. It looks noticeably different. The backside paper media has a plastic frame around it rather than just the pliable rubber and cardboard design of the OEM. Let's see how it does. The Denso will do the trick, I imagine, if you're not living at Redline. We're seeing 185 CFM average on this guy and maybe expected a bit more myself, but still half the price, 370 CFM. That's 96% of the OEM piece. And coming in at exactly half the price of OEM, you can buy two for what you need one of the OEM is this Perlator, a brand we all agree is usually a decent pick in oil filters for the money. Let's see how it does in air filters. This looks to have a little bit too much goo around the edges like the Fram, but performed in this case, and we allow the same downtime for the shop facts between testing to get back to ambient temps to not affect air density. It performed pretty well and around what the Denso did and maybe a smidge higher on average 186, which will make for 372 total in the same 96% of OEM airflow, all things being equal. But what if you're not staying stock or the application is a higher performance turbocharged one in the case of this 911's air filter? Let's find out. This is a cold air intake off of eBay that we got for 75, 80 bucks. The famous go-to mod, it seems like for everyone's ride. I've been guilty in the past as well. Gotta take that currently plastic intake that doesn't really heat soak and turn it into aluminum that will get too hot to touch and funnel air in from usually the same spot as a stock place, making it no cooler by my math, but that cone filter, maybe it's good for something. And when we were all here shooting the breeze, I made the bold claim that maybe it 
Okay, I just did say it. A dedicated $500 K&N intake like this would flow better out of the box, but that, and really throwing Mark under the bus here, his expensive intake after 5,000 plus miles now probably flows the same as an eBay intake would after that same amount of time, now that the K&N's oiled intake has picked up a bunch of dust and crud. So poor Mark, who was not even a part of this debate, was bribed by me with a case of beer and a free oil change to install this setup three to four months ago, and here, looking at the state between them, I'm feeling pretty good with my luck. So let's see, with an eBay special up first, compared to just a stock intake, what we've been looking at, we use some extra large heat shrink tubing to mate our new intakes to the shop vac, and it makes for a surprisingly good seal, so can recommend. With the polished performer here, my redeemer, hooked up, and off of the surface here where it's being tested, like the K&N intake will be, vacuum tubes and MAF sensor are all blocked off we get, near the performance level of a stock intake without any filter in it, so pretty good then, the average here being 212 CFM, nice. Still below the 238 that this setup can do with nothing attached, so we're still measuring some restriction, which is a good thing. Priced per piece, like these up here, this is $40 per side of the engine, 424 CFM total, 110% of OEM parts. Is that 10% more air going into your engine at wide open throttle? I think that depends on how choked your engine is, wind stock of course. We can only say it's less restriction by this much. And here is the K&N Typhoon intake, $480 as a tube intake kit, which is $240 per tube. Mark's had this for years, but the filter itself was purchased last year. And yeah, I'm not looking so hot here. This isn't helping my case in the slightest. 200 and 24 CFM average. I really figured these things always look so crusty under hoods when I see them, it would really even things out, but that totals 446 CFM or 116% of OEM compared to the stock airbox. And this is the difference with a K&N filter in that stock airbox versus the whole Typhoon intake thing. Well, there is one last subject we wanted to tackle. Admittedly, it was probably mainly me who was curious about this. On many sites, if you navigate to intake replacement filters and sort by price, you're gonna find some Porsche parts at the top. And in this case, a $300 one by BMC, $300 for just the filter. Now, fair, it is massive and it has intake arms coming off of it and vacuum ports into it. But so does the OEM replacement one, which makes this guy's $90 price seem pretty tame for the Porsche brand. What's interesting about this, besides just being pricey Stuttgart parts, is turbo engines for the same displacement and RPM range take much more air. And in the 911 Carrera's case, for years that use these, basically 2017 to present three liter turbos, Porsche has used the same filter for models from a 370 horsepower base Carrera up to a 473 horsepower GTS. So if they designed it to perform well with the top trim and it's using the same parts, I feel like upgrading it for your regular Carrera would do little, or I assume. But we're gonna need a lot more shop vac action. We're dealing with both banks of that six cylinder engine now, plus it is turbocharged. We need on the order of, by my math, 600 plus ish CFM, which is just what we have hooked up here. Gonna need to use a Y here at one end with an exhaust pipe. With an OEM Porsche filter now attached, had to plug in the shop vacs into separate breakers so as to get peak wattage out of each of them. 188 average CFM out of this end, 216 CFM out of this guy, and having two on this end usually takes them away from the bower on the other end in an unfair tug of war sort of fight. And yeah, 125 CFM average here for a total of and I don't need to double any longer, this is for the full engine, 529 CFM. So it is representing some restriction with this much air vacuum sucking through that filter, even when the size versus open air, despite all the surface area on this thing. And here is a $300 aftermarket performance air filter by BMC. Same setup, same outlets plugged into the Bowers, getting an average of 203 CFM out of this side of the filter. The Big Craftsman's gonna get 243 on average. That's more than it usually makes with nothing plugged into it. There's a Venturi effect happening with the smaller vac pulling air towards this big guy, it seems. We calibrate the meter, of course, based on each shop vac's exhaust port before we measure it. And on this last guy, that's gonna be 145 CFM, totaling 500 
and 91. Three times the cost, sure, but also we're seeing 17% more airflow using the same amount of air demand, like vacuum through a system. Of course, the air this engine sees is more based on turbo outlet pressure and volume and IATs, not so dependent strictly on engine vacuum in general. So the changes are probably not as significant as one made up here in comparison. When it comes to the filters, I think OEM is obviously a good choice. The company that has to pay for your warranty if something goes wrong is also designing the parts so they have a vested interest. K&N seems to work if you like to put the pedal to the metal and if you don't, then Denso and Perlator I think are within the realm of acceptance for less than half the price in some cases, so not so bad. But still, I was definitely wrong in more places than one with my assumptions on these things. Probably won't be the last time either, and that's why we like data. I come in with bias and can be shown wrong just as often as right. At least Mark already had this intake, which means I'm only on the hook for $570 in intakes and filters. That can be your takeaway, don't be me, but you can tune in every Friday as we make stuff like this to continue seeing why. Thanks for watching.